Hey, I'm John. Welcome to Mr. G's Workbench and part one of the Kitty Hawk SH-60F Ocean Hawk build review. In this episode, we'll build and paint the cockpit and cabin assemblies. Uh, thanks to Jim over at Kitmaker for providing the kit we're taking a look at today. I'll provide a link to all the Kitmaker family of websites down below. Be sure to take a look at them. Uh, they're well worth your time. Trust me, I like them a lot. All right, so I, I have some experience uh, building a Kitty Hawk uh, Black Hawk series helicopter. I got this when it came out. I believe it was the MH-60. Uh, I bought it as soon as it came out. Black Hawk Down is one of my favorite movies, and I couldn't wait to dive into it. Uh, as you can see, I'm pretty far along on it. Still have some uh, detail painting to do, and I still have to install the rotors. But overall, I was happy with it. Um, all things considered, given Kitty Hawk's reputation and my previous experiences with them, I was pleasantly surprised at how it went together. Um, I'm hoping to use some of the mistakes that I, I made during that build to do a little bit better on this one, and I can pass those, uh, those little secrets along to you as we go along. So uh, hopefully that'll translate into a better build uh, today for us. Before we get started, just want to ask uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I hope you will. Uh, just hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and be notified every time I put out a new video. Uh, also, if you like the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. Uh, if you do that, just let me know what I did wrong uh, so that I can improve uh, for the next time. And, you know, thumbs up and comments and stuff help me in the, uh, the nebulous world of uh, the YouTube algorithm. So uh, be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know what you think down below as well. Very much appreciated. Thank you all very much. Uh, every chance I get, like I always say, uh, I'll take every chance I get to thank you guys for, for coming back and, and watching my videos and interacting with me uh, so that we can share this hobby together. That being said, let's jump into step one and see what we've got coming up. So let's take a look at the instructions. As usual, Kitty Hawk has great artwork on the cover. Uh, then we open it up, we get, we have some nice artwork here. And for full disclosure, I'm not gonna lie, this is probably one of the two schemes that I'm looking at. I kinda like this whole bulldog thing. I like the green, uh, it offsets against the gray. So we've got that. Then they give you some uh, parts maps here for the uh, sprues that are given. Same thing here, and here's our first issue with this. Uh, apparently, they had a problem when they were printing this. Uh, whatever happened, the CAD didn't come out properly, and you'll have to get the replacement diagrams and instructions online. There'll be a link down below to get the correct uh, pages. The two pages that are affected are the page, the first page of the instructions, and then the page with step 33 through 38. So we've got that covered, I've got them here. So let's jump into the assembly of the cabin. Let me get the parts out and then we'll examine them a little closer. Here's the cockpit and cabin floor, which is HB8 in this version. Uh, you'll see here, this is the standard Kitty Hawk fare. You've got lots of these stupid little ejection pin flash things and they just seem to plague everything. But outside of that, the, the molding, uh, as it typically does on Kitty Hawk kits, the molding looks good, it's clean, and I think it'll look good under a coat of primer and paint. So there's a bunch of holes that have to be drilled out here according to the instructions. And then I believe this is the winch that gets installed here that is exposed underneath. So I will take care of that and I will show you the progress. I'm up to step four, and I just wanted to show you that it wouldn't be a, I, I really, 
hate to keep lumping things into categories, but this is a repetitive problem. Step four, uh, one, two uh, parts are mislabeled. They're labeled HD13 and HD17. I'm looking on the sprues like, man, I can't find these parts to save myself. Well, because they're HE. So my plan here is I'm going to assemble HC15 and 18 along with uh, 13 and 17. I'm going to build that all onto the uh, cabin floor because the these two parts, 15 and 18, uh, locate into holes in the floor. So it's all going to be the same color, which is why I'm leaving out HE19 for now. Then I'll go in and detail paint and weather the, uh, the railings. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Here's the assembled sonar station and the, the details good. Uh, there's a little keyboard that goes in there. Uh, there's a piece here that's not mentioned in the directions and you need it to finish off the this uh, work surface. This is the other part of the hinge. It's HD3. It's not in the diagram. It's just shown installed in the diagram. They show you the uh, the joystick stowed and there's a photo etch piece that goes on top, uh, PE2. Uh, I, I chose to show it uh, being used. Here's the, uh, here's the cabin with the sonar operator seat installed. Like I said, uh, I installed this all now because there was no way, you can't put this together independent of locating the, those two rails on the, on the floor before you do it. Uh, I had issues with uh, this piece in the middle, uh, HE17 didn't, it's not sitting centered exactly. It's offset to the right here uh, because it can only reach one set of rails. It doesn't reach both. And you can see that, I mean, it's, it's fairly straight. So it's not a matter that I did anything cockeyed. So let me get those other seats done. We'll take a look at everything before we paint it. This is just, a prime example of awful kit engineering. This is the wiring harness for, I believe, the Sono buoy dispenser. It's HF27. You tell me how I'm going to clip every one of these without damaging this. I've been picking at it with uh, with my uh, my fine point nippers, and if I get it done, you'll see it done.
So we've gotten as far as we're getting in this episode with the uh, cabin assembled and inserted into the fuselage and the fuselage halves put together. Uh, we just talked about some of the issues I had uh, after I joined the halves together. Uh, I'm Like I said, I'm not going to worry about this up here. This is all getting covered with the engines and, uh, you know, there's a whole cowl that goes in the front here. So we're, we're not going to deal with this, this gap for the most part because you're never going to see it. Uh, you'll notice uh, since I just a moment ago mentioned the problems, I've added the nose on. I had briefly entertained keeping the cover open as Kitty Hawk designed it. Uh, that, that idea quickly went away because the nose is helping uh, support the shape of the front of the helicopter. So I pinched in the sides with a clamp, I dropped this in place, and I ran a, a bead of glue around it. Once it was dry, I added a little white putty around the top and the bottom, and I came in and just sanded uh, everything to line up a little bit better, look a little cleaner. So that's in. Uh, this, this little hatch here on the bottom that fills in the center section, that was a pain in the ass. Uh, I got it lined up, uh, took a good bit of filler because of the, the issue I had with the gap, uh, but I got it done. I've put, um, I've done, I'm up to coat number three of putty and sand on the bottom. I'm not gonna continue doing that. I, it's, it looks fairly clean. I think once I hit it with a coat of primer, I'll see if there's any obvious issues and I'll, I'll go back and do it one more time if I have to. And then I'll hit any riveting that needs to be done. But let, let's be serious, it's on the bottom. Uh, it sits low to the ground. I'm not gonna have it sitting on a mirror, so I, why waste time? Uh, other than that, I've got, I sanded the tail on the top and the bottom. The tail fit well in spite of the fuselage gaps. Um, I'm curious to see what's going to happen. You, you have to put this, this piece on the end here on the tail. Uh, my instinct would be to shove it all the way in, but I don't think it's supposed to be. Even though, if you look here, I don't know if you can see that, it's not going to focus right. If you look here, there's like a, a gap behind the hinges that might very well belong there. So we'll find out as we go along because there's no turning back now. So that's where we're at. Overall, assembling the cabin was, was actually enjoyable. Kitty Hawk gives you a good bit of detail in there. I can't attest to what's accurate and what's not, uh, but it, it looked good after I painted it and put it all in. When you look through this little door or you look through the window on the other side, it looks good, and uh, if you're a detail-oriented guy, you could go to town on this. So, I'm, like I said, I'm building it out of the box. Uh, I'm happy with the way the, the cockpit looks as well. I added a couple of decals in uh, from... Uh, I've got the air scale decals. I've used some of their smaller ones just to give it a little bit more, you know, for what little you're going to see. Um, I didn't enjoy the, the seats in the front. Uh, and, and the same goes for the uh, this sonar operator's seat. Um, getting the seat cushion uh, to sit properly within the metal frame that they give you, it's not really metal, but it's meant to represent the metal frame seat, uh, was a little difficult. So uh, I got them in as best I could, and uh, the next time we get together, we'll finish up assembly the outside and hopefully get a coat of primer on this. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to do this in three episodes. So, episode one is uh, in the books, as they say. And uh, let me just uh, close out by saying uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I hope you found this enjoyable to watch. Uh, if you did, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't, you give me a thumbs down. And in either circumstance, I very much appreciate any comment you leave below. Did you build this and and you enjoyed it or you hated it? Let me know. If you want to say, John, I think your build looks like crap, by all means, you know, you're welcome to do so. Leave it in the comments below. So, uh, again, if you're not subscribed, I hope you'll consider subscribing after you watch this. Once again, thanks to Jim over at Kitmaker for providing the kit we're building. Uh, it's very much appreciated. I hope you'll check out his websites. Uh, I've got a link to the family of Kitmaker websites down in the description below. So until the next time, stay well, take care, and thanks for stopping in.